Hey guys, welcome back to my CCNA 200301 course. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure Ligger 3 port channels. Are you ready? Let's get started. First of all, please accept my apology because of my distorted voice. It's the flu season in Southern Hemisphere, so I got <laughs> infected by a flu. Um, in the previous video, we talked about um, a layer 2 port channels and uh, I mentioned if you don't configure your redundant link between your switches then a spanning tree will kick in and blocks one of these interfaces so we configure port channel to have the better performance and also the redundancy um, the thing is if this port channel is in layer 2 then for example if computer A on the left side wants to communicate to computer B on the other side, when the traffic receives at the switch 1, switch 1 will look up in the MAC address table and forwards the traffic to the other switch based on the entry. So we call this a layer 2 communication. But if we configure these two interfaces in layer 3, then the communication will be in layer 3, which means the, the switch will look up the routing table instead of the MAC address table to forward the traffic to the other side. We'll be talking about what is routing table, how does routing work, etc. in the routing section. But for now, just bear in mind that this is the, the main difference between layer 2 port channel and layer 3 port channel. If you want to configure a layer 3 port channel, your switch must be a layer 3 switch which means it has to be able to have layer 3 interfaces and we call them MLS or multi-layer switches. Uh, when you have layer 3 interfaces, a spanning tree will not actually block your redundant links. I mean, if you configure these interfaces individually in layer 3 mode, spanning tree will not block them. And if you configure your routing the stuff properly, then um, your switch will have two entries in the routing table for the same destination. So you uh, actually would be able to still benefit from the redundant links and load balance your traffic. Uh, but the thing is, based on the Cisco's recommendation, it's better to configure these redundant links in layer three port channel to have a better performance. Now let's go and see how we can configure layer 3 port channels. Configuration wise, layer 2 and layer 3 uh, port channel configuration is pretty much the same. So the initial steps are the same. So if we go to global configuration mode and select our interfaces, Ethernet 0 slash 0 to 1, still same recommendation, shut them down first and then configure the port channel with channel group and then the number and the mode depends which uh, mode you want to select LACP, PACP or just port channeling and then if you remember from the previous video I mentioned that um, from now on if you want to configure those interfaces you have to do it on the interface port channel but on this specific um, virtual environment which I'm using, which is uh, Cisco VIOS, uh, it doesn't support that. So I have to individually configure the, the interfaces as well. But in real world switches, you don't have to do it. So first of all, I go to interface port channel 1 and the command that makes this port channel uh, or put it in layer 3 is no switch port. This is similar command if you want to put any interface in layer 3 mode on multi-layer switches. Routers, interfaces by default they are in layer 3 but um, normally in layer 3 switches um, it's in layer 2 so you have to change the mode to no switch port. As I mentioned, I have to replicate this command in, uh, on the individual interfaces as well, otherwise it doesn't work. So if I go back here and show you show run interface port channel, sorry, interface ethernet zero slash zero, 
In real world uh, scenarios, uh, when you configure or run this command on the interface port channel, same command will be applied on the individual interface as well, but it's not happening in this virtual environment. So I have to go to interface range ethernet 0 slash 0 and 1 again and configure them in no switch port. And then I go back to my interface port channel, interface port channel 1, and I want to configure an IP address on my interface port channel so I can test the layer 3 communication between the switches. So what I would say is IP address and then the IP address 192.168.1.1 and then the subnet mask. Again, don't worry about these things. We'll be reviewing them again in the routing section. Now, if I have a look at my um, uh, interfaces with show IP interface brief, you can see that interface port channel 1 is actually um, in up, up mode, which shouldn't because the, the actually the involving interfaces are in shutdown mode, but this is the virtualization environment caveats. Um, but the thing is, what I wanted to show you is uh, actually it has an IP address now. And, and if I have a look at my routing table, sorry, show IP route, you can see that 192.168.1.0 slash 24 is directly connected through port channel 1. So now I go to my interface range again and get them out of shutdown mode. So I have to replicate the commands in switch 2 as well. Interface range ethernet 0 slash 0 to 1 and then first put them in channel group mode on and then no switch port and then interface port channel 1 Again, no switch port and then IP address, IP address 192.168.1.2, 255, 255, 0, and then going back to my interface range and then no shutdown. Let's run some verification commands. Show interface status to make sure our interfaces are connected. As you can see, uh, instead of VLAN 1, you can see that this interface is in routed mode now. And if I run show interface ETH0 slash 0 switch port, you can see that switch port is disabled, which means this interface now is in layer 3 mode. And also if I go to show ether channel summary, you can see that uh, this port channel is in routed mode now. And again, another caveat for the virtualization environment, you can see that our interfaces are removed from this port channel. So I go to interface range ETH0 slash 0 to 1 and then channel group 1 mode on. So if I run show ether channel summary again, you can see that this port channel now is in routed mode. It's in layer 3 and it is up and interfaces are up as well. Let's review stuff on switch 1 as well. Show ether channel summary again, it's been removed from here as well. Interface uh, range ETH 0 slash 0 to 1 and then um, channel group 1 and then mode on. Let's make sure it is fine. Show ether channel summary. Yeah, it's fine too. So now I'm expecting to be able to ping the other side. So on switch 1 I say ping 192.168.1.2 which is the other side switch and as you can see um, I have communications now 
The first one is actually not happening normally when you configure the setup first because uh, that first one actually for the first time that it sends the ARP request, it take a f like a milliseconds to understand what is the other side's MAC address. And then when it's fine, next time if you run it, then it has the MAC address entry of the other side, all of your pings will go through. So when you configure interfaces for the first time, don't worry about this first actually um, timeout between your pings. All right, guys, this was our today's video. In the next video, I'll be talking about spanning tree protocol. I wish you enjoyed today's video and see you in the next ones.